at 8.29 a.m. in Alaska. Ooh, what's going on? Why would we need that? Hmm. Oh, another one, too. Oh, what's this down here? Oh, I see. We have an eclipse. Wow. Well, I'd say that is irrefutable. That means there is a gigantic object right there making that sun come out the side. Wow. Cape Yakutaga looking to the southeast. And can't quite figure this out, but I think this is uh, interesting evidence. I, I believe this is an object, and this is a uh, cloaking device of some sort uh, accompanying it. And we see, it, we see the actual object there. It's about the only thing I can think of in terms of how that could occur. Now, I can even get a better look at this object right here. Certainly seems to be textured. Is this is this light? Is this part of the object? Tough to tell. But it certainly does appear to be a anomalous object that is not part of the sun. This is not a flare. This is an object. Would you not agree? That's what I thought. And at the same airport at um, eight, I'm sorry, 4.52 a.m., looking to the northwest, northwest, very early in the morning, we have this light source. Hmm. Very compelling. And then the sky lights up. It looks it looks like this is the sky uh, looking that way. It may just be the sun coming up the other side, reflecting off of these clouds. All right. So after further review, I checked uh, when the moon sets. And it's supposed to set at 4.58 a.m. And it's 5.05 a.m. So 
my mistake, that is the moon going down in the northwest. And in Hawk Inlet, looking to the south at 9.39 a.m., progressing forward, we see the object that we've seen many times. We see this object up here. And it appears that we've got the very large object that someone has pointed out to me is probably the planet Helion. And uh, in back of, of this object, that's the object that is causing the eclipse and the use of the NASA fake sun simulator in front so that we don't notice. And uh, but we noticed. This would be spectacular to see without these chem clouds. Kind of a shame. But I also understand the uh, panic that would ensue. Regardless if anything were to happen or not, people would be uh, quite concerned. All right, it's Hawk Inland to the southwest now. And in this area, we're going to see an object evolve right there. And I'm going to back up again. The way it evolves, it does not appear to be just like a cloud moving across the sky. I cannot definitively say what it is. I will show you an enhanced version of it. And I could be completely wrong on that. And uh, however, it, it does appear to be what I think. In fact, it almost looks like there's a another orb here in front. But. So just one more time, I'll back up. And we'll just kind of watch that thing pop up. And let's see, southwest. Yeah, um, other people have been seeing things today, so that very well could be what, what it appears to look like. Hopefully it's not. This is Craig looking to the southwest, and I'm going to show you this object right here. This is in the southwest. So uh, this is different than that uh, the round one that, that we've seen. This one is actually octagonal. And uh, you can probably see it fairly well right there. But um, here's an enhanced version of it. You can really see the straight lines in it. So it's uh, different. Noteworthy. So this is the same airport, and uh, and I found the uh, the round object, but it looks it looks like up here we have um, a very large object, and but here's the uh, the round object that we've spotted. I think that's it. Well, certainly, it's something here. Here's that rounder object. So can't be in two places at the same time. So oh, many, many objects nearby. This is the elaborate fake NASA sun simulator and lensing system trying to obfuscate. And it's no longer working. Also, I'm noticing that um, they used to cut out all kinds of clips in these, in these uh, cams. And uh, I'm not seeing that at the moment. So it's almost troubling. This is Edna Bay looking to the south. And this footage is particularly compelling to me because you can see what appear to be craters here. And when you can see them moving, you can see a huge crater right there.
and that's new. I haven't seen that crater before. And since it moves, that is very, very compelling. You know, that basically rules out that this is a, a lens of some sort being used or anything like that. I mean, this is uh, clearly an object in our sky. I'm just noticing this over here now. Um, back up a little bit. Okay, so are those just two separate objects or let's see, does it come out the other side of the sun? Okay, it almost looks like this is the flare of the object. That's exactly what that is. Because the object is right here now. Yep, and then you can see it right here. Fascinating. Thorn Bay, looking to the south, 8.18 a.m. I want to see a couple different things. For one, it looks like we've got probably a large object here. We've got something up here, and most notably this one. And this looks different today. You know, it's uh, certainly is taking on a, a different um, textured characteristic. And... Um, you know, does that mean it's just getting closer? Is the lighting a little different? I don't know, but uh, wow. Go back and look at this again. Okay. Backwards. You know, clearly there's some type of interaction going on here. Just insane. All right, this is going to be the last one for now, and we've got this object down here, kind of zipping out, and we do see something here, but bottom line, guys, is that we got stuff flying all over the place, and uh, I think I've shown that time and time again, as have some of the other good researchers, and everyone's work has been very important. And, you know, so I think we all have a pretty good understanding that uh, these things are getting closer and becoming more visible. So, you know, again, you know, as to what is going to happen, we don't know. Um, the cognitive dissonance that the uh, Stagger Olson report has been talking about is, is huge. And, you know, for me, I separated from my family because they uh, could not handle the truth and um, you know and I had to respect that at some point uh, I know a lot of us that are watching this I'm not doing this to like scare people and that sort of thing I'm sharing it because there's those of us that have been observing these things and you know hopefully by now have come to terms with you know whatever may happen will happen and 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 that's that um, so, you know, I think once you come to the truth of understanding that this is here, this is real, and this is happening now, um, yeah, you want to know, you want to keep up to date as to what's happening, and that's why I do it. I was observing today how small the subscribership is really with some of the bigger channels. You know, the Nibiru channel, I mean, they're around 50,000. I think Steve got up to over 50,000. You know, I've got 4,000 something. That's nothing. <laughs> That's absolutely nothing. So, 
you know, the mainstream media, the shills, um, you know, have really kept people from uh, finding out. And, um, you know, in the, in the long run, for us, it's probably better. Uh, you know, if everybody did know, all of a sudden, <laughs> you'd kind of wish that you hadn't woke everybody up, as sad as that may sound, because it's, uh, you know, if things, I mean, if the power goes down, you know, that's it. I mean, that, that's how vulnerable we are. If the power goes down, it doesn't mean the Earth is going to blow up or anything like that. But I mean, if uh, you know these magnetic things or the uh, earthquake scenario out along the New Madrid fault line, uh, interrupting the fuel deliveries and, and food deliveries and stuff that I mentioned, um, you know, that's that's enough to set things off. Quite frankly, so you know, I will say once again, um, the best we can do for ourselves, I think, is to have some provisions and. Uh, you know, how can we could we survive years and years? You know, I, I don't I don't think so, quite frankly, unless you know you've really gone to extreme measures. Um, but I think that you can feel a little more comfortable knowing that you've got you know some stuff to hold you over for a little while in case it is just a short term um, situation. And uh, so that's where I'm coming from, and I'm still very hopeful that this is going to be, as Patty Albersard said, a, a more gentle situation than, than um, was originally thought. Um, and that's what she says in that interview, that, that the elites had, had really thought that this was going to be catastrophic and, and that uh, now they are not feeling that that's the case. Um, and that whatever was going to happen was going to be more gentle. Now, um, there still may be some rather spectacular things, but it probably will not be the extinction level event that, um, that many thought. And that's that's essentially how I got started with the Sandy Hook or the sign in front of the uh, garbage piles of stuffed animals and fake memorials and all that. And, um, and the CIA sign there said, first of all, 26 surviving and um, indicating that nobody had actually died. And also there was uh, the letters E-L-E, -E oh. Um, the uh, ELE was elementary, um, ELE, they capitalized the ELE in elementary, and um, he's standing for Extinction Level Event. And that's, that's what tipped me off to uh, seek out what the heck, you know, may cause an Extinction Level Event. And um, that's how I ended up here. So, um, and then the fact that I know all these people and all these false flags. I mean, um, oh, this is really crazy. And, uh, you know, I live right next to Skull and Bones. Um, my, work, my wife, my ex-wife now works right there. I mean, they, they have, like, engaged my family in every single way you can imagine. They've employed her. Uh, my son, I even, I even believe he uh, let them use one of his photographs. Um, one of the false flags, his girlfriend, friends. I see their my son's friends, their coaches. Uh, I mean, it's like it's so sad, um, you know. But you know, their cognitive dissonance will not allow them to see this. And I mean, my my oldest son was even in that the Boston bombing uh, movie or remake. They even put him in that. I mean, you know, so they've just really divided and conquered my family. And you know, try to make me out to be the outcast, and uh, so be it. You know, I still had to. I couldn't once I was on this path to find truth. I could not not see what I was seeing. You know, <laughs> when you watch these these hoaxes and you see all these people, you know. I mean, you just can't like. I couldn't anyway. I could not look at that and say I don't know that person because I do. I, you know, I've been hanging around them for twenty some odd years, playing golf with them, sports. You know, coaching everything. <laughs> You know, and I could only justify what they were doing because I figured that they were trying to save their own lives and and their families. Um, you know, I don't agree with they with what they've done, but um, you know, trying to enforce you know more gun laws and things like that to their benefit. Um, that's kind of what I think. Um, so, ah, what a strange trip it's been. That's all I can say, and. Anyway, folks, um, 
you know, let's try to hope for the best, and um, I'll keep informing you what I see. This is this is show and tell as far as I'm concerned, because I'm no astronomer. I'm just showing you the pictures and giving you my humble opinion of what I think I see, and some very nice uh, subscribers and viewers comment and give their input and that sort of thing. And you know, we fumbled we fumbled our way through here to try to understand what's happening and. Uh, so, anyway, that's it for today, and thank you so much for watching, and I will talk to you in my next video. Bye-bye. We are at Eagle, looking to the southeast, at 8.29 a.m. in Alaska. Ooh, what's going on? Why would we need that? Hmm. On another one too. Oh, what's this down here? Oh, I see. We have an eclipse. Wow. Well, I'd say that is irrefutable. That means there is a gigantic object right there making that sun come out the side. Wow. Cape Yakutago looking to the southeast. And can't quite figure this out, but I think this is uh, interesting evidence. I, I believe this is an object, and this is a uh, cloaking device of some sort uh, accompanying it. And we see, it, we see the actual object there. about the only thing I can think of in terms of how that could occur. Now, maybe get a better look at this object right here. Certainly seems to be textured. Is this is this light?